Hey everybody and welcome back to Expedition Engineering. My name is Brett and right now we're inside of our uh, kind of dusted, dust-free tent. And we are working on building this. This is the starboard leg of our dinghy davit hardtop expedition enclosure is what we're calling it. We're doing a closed cell foam core. The first two layers being carbon fiber, we will make the structure Get it all secured together and then we'll be wrapping the entire thing in s glass the entire thing will get wrapped in fiberglass and then painted that will then make an entire composite structure that then gets bolted to the deck of the boat and should be super super solid i'm giving the part a bit of a trim cutting off all the excess off the sides of the part so i can better line them up the goal right now is just to get them close enough so they can stand up on their own next to each other without cutting me so I can figure out the center mount section. I made a very terrible decision and proceeded to cut MDF into tons of tiny pieces and mostly dust in my first attempt to design the center mount. We have several ideas and solutions for how we want this massive structure to mount to the boat, and this is roughly what we're coming up with. A center core made of metal that we can glass to the arch and then bolt through the deck. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Right now, I'm just trying to see how wide this is all going to be in real life, because so far we've only drawn this all up in the ether. really been struggling making these mounts. I got it all cut out multiple times and then ended up messing up my cuts because I wasn't paying attention. So here is the leg. I just have it taped together right now just to kind of give us a reference point. This part will go in the front and this will go in the back. Like that. There will be a gap in the middle and that's where all the wires can come down. You know, all the solar panel wiring, the Starlink, the, all sorts of stuff can come down, run down through there, and then go through the deck. And here, there's bolt holes. There will be bolts that go into there, and there will be two bolts that go in here as well. And yeah, that's how it's going to mount. So I'm just getting this figured out. But then this, I'm not going to tell you what this is, but see if you can figure out what that's going to be there. I'll leave that open to your imagination. But all of this is going to be in between the two pieces like that and it'll fill in that gap with metal and that is going to be the metal that bolts to the deck through the deck there'll be a base plate underneath the deck so it all gets clamped out and then all of that is going to get glassed and carboned onto these legs before we close it all up obviously it's the next day and now we're able to get this final piece unbagged and off the form this is our final piece the piece you saw going into the bag in the last video. And although we still aren't pros, this one actually came out super nice. And my hands are still numb from the night before using the oscillating saw, so I convinced Jade to give it a go cutting off the excess carbon. We're gonna call it the flange. And yeah, she gave up pretty quickly, and so it's back on me. Hey, so it turns out that actually we have one more of these big pieces to lay up. See, this is why we're having Jay do all the masterminding of the carbon and cutting. She just reminded me that there are two pieces to each of these legs, and we have two legs, so if you're paying attention at home, means we need a total of four pieces. And just like with all the other pieces, once we have the carbon and foam wetted out, we laid on the peel ply, perforated release film, and foam batting. Then transferred the whole lot to the form and into the vacuum bag. The form is not actually a uniform curve, and in fact, it's fairly parabolic, so we really need to get it in the right spot. Once it's there, we use my favorite sticky gummy butyl tape stuff and fail again, but slightly less, at making an airtight bag. Also, it's super noisy in the shop, so finding air leaks by sound is nearly hopeless. We probably could use smoke or something, and I really consider taking up vaping just for this purpose, but I don't own a Subaru anymore. We have a heater now, so this is now actually just the next day. How great is that? All right, part four of four is now off the mold, out of the bag, and ready for trimming, and now sanding. Yes, we are going to sand the excess carbon so that all the parts are perfectly matching and in line with the foam. The goal being to sand only the super hard carbon down to, but not including, the super soft foam. Our first attempt was with a rectangular vibrating palm sander. We didn't want to use the kind that spins like a, a random orbital spinning sander, 
for the potential that it could catch the carbon and rip it off of the foam, delaminating the entire thing. The reality is that this rectangle sander is just woefully underwhelming. Nothing against Festool, it's great. And this is really just the wrong tool for the job. Eventually, I got smart and went and grabbed the portable belt sander. This seems like the right tool for the job. The shop does have a really large stationary belt sander, which is awesome, and it would make really quick work of this. The problem is that it has guards that are fixed, and so I wouldn't be able to sand the long sides of the parts. So this sander is great. It has a little feet that allows us to set it on its back, and then it has this nice long surface that we can run the parts on. It took some practice to see how fast I needed to move the part because it would obviously heat up with the friction and started gumming up the belt instead of sanding. I imagine that's probably a function of the epoxy getting too hot. I was able to clean the belt and did so a couple times using the cleaning puck, which is some sort of waxy surface, I'm not really sure what it is, but I was able to sand all of these parts and there was still life left on the belt, which was quite surprising. And while I'm in here sanding, making a big mess, Jade was outside of the tent using the oscillating saw to do more precise trims in some of the places to save me from having to sand so much. Turns out the shop also has a Festool oscillating saw, and it is leaps and bounds better than our rigid branded one, and it doesn't make your hands go numb in seconds. This was the best part. I realized as my knees started hurting from the concrete floor that we have a freaking table. So I moved everything off the table and moved to the table to save my knees and back, only to realize that our ceiling is too low and I will still have to kneel most of the time anyway. Quick interlude back at the boat to grab some parts. We realized the other day that we have a ton of scrap pieces of carbon and epoxy is pretty cheap. Cheaper, in fact, than buying new panels and our panels are sun rotted, cracked, and leaking. So while I'm inside working on our engine, something that I'm gonna be showing you here soon, Jade took off all the instruments, the chart plotter, compasses, winch handles, and engine panel. We've ponchoed the cockpit. You've what? We've ponchoed. Ponchoed. We've applied poncho. Poncho applied. That's funny. Cool. Now we can take all the things to the shop and make them pretty. Yay. And fix all the cracks. Make yep. things waterproof. Makes things seal better. Yep. Make things make things just better in general. The first step to any restoration or really fixing is cleaning. And although we aren't planning to paint any of this at this time, the logic is the same as with any sort of paint prep. The more time you spend in prep, the better your finish. The prep work is done. We just finished getting all of the old silicone, 4200. Some of that 4200 was definitely 5200. <laughs> Based on how hard it was to get off. We have a bag of scraps there and we have a box of scraps right here. And some of these are pretty big. We haven't had it in us to throw any of the carbon fiber away. Yeah, like every time we cut a scrap, like, mm, that's like a dollar. That's <laughs> like 50 cents. Like that's, <laughs> I guess it's probably on euros. That's uh, a euro. That's a 50, I think there's still 50 cents. 50, half a euros. <laughs> We went through a few renditions of how we wanted to do this. Originally, we thought we would just put a single layer of carbon fiber skin over the part and call it good. They call that skinning. It's really just a, a superficial cover that makes it look good. But these parts have some really odd complex curves all over them. And all of our scrap carbon is a super heavy, big twill. There's really no way that I think it can make those curves and look good without there being big gaps. There's, I'm sure there's some workarounds, but what we came up with was to basically just make our own flat sheets of cured carbon. Then we will cut them into rectangles and lay them inside the part, and the parts that isn't covered in carbon we will paint black. At least that's the plan, and that's what I'm working on right now, and Jade is getting to work on the foam. I am about to start cutting the foam pieces for the fore and aft portion of the arch. So if you look over here, basically the pieces That'll make this three-dimensional rather than two-dimensional. And I've got to get the measurement exactly right because we have outsourced our metal bracketing that will mount it to the boat. And that is a specific size that's going to keep it a specific width. So if I cut these to the wrong size, it's going to cause us a lot of grief. But the size we gave to the metal worker is in the metric system. <laughs> and none of our measuring devices are in the metric system. So this is going to prove to be a bit of a challenge. And we are splitting forces today. So you are working on the four and a half pieces and I am working on some skinning. And we also, also only have one microphone. So this is kind of fun. It feels really unnatural. I feel like we're like in a talk show or something. Yeah. 
like a cheesy, like, uh, like tele church. What are those called? Here you go. It took a bit of a fight, but I finally was able to get this other one to pair back up. So now we have two microphones. Now you can be graced with Jade's melodic voice as well. such a satisfying so sound satisfying. Yeah. 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 yeah this is the engine control so the instrument panel sits in here it has all the engine instruments and you can see it's all sorts of cracked it's got you know, just sun damaged and rotted and cracked all over the place so we am trying to figure out how to repair it and this is also cracked but we've kind of salvaged this this would be hard to replace because it has all the mounting for the actual instruments. I'm just going to chop up some of this scrap fiberglass to basically make some chop strand so I can make uh, essentially thickened epoxy with just a little shards of glass in it. There we go. That'll thicken up some epoxy nicely. Delicious. Don't breathe it. And there on the corner, you can see those two flat sheets of carbon that I made. They cured overnight and I pulled the peel ply off today. And so now I just need to pour epoxy on top to give them a nice gloss finish and give them a little bit more thickness. That's just gonna be epoxy. Again, these are not structural. They aren't really holding any weight or anything. They're just to look good mostly. Jade, tell us what happened. I forgot that it was curved. I designed the curve. <laughs> And <laughs> I promptly we, forgot we spent about it. We so much time making sure these have a curve. And then Jade promptly disregards it. I cut a bunch of rectangles with no curve. <laughs> it's okay, I'll cut up the rectangles and then I'll curve them. So you can just bend them, right? Right. I'm just, I'm like, no, we're going for it. We're getting stuff done. We're doing this wrong. We're doing it wrong. So we don't rush it, Jade. So we <sighs> think about things. <sighs> okay. Really why it's a big disappointment is because we're trying to make the most of this material. This is expensive. We're gonna use it all, and we're gonna use it all smartly, and we're not gonna mess things up. But I did, but that's okay, because I cut a bunch of rectangles, and you know what else needs to be a rectangle? The stringers for the hard top, which will come soon. So I'm just gonna set these to the side, and then we'll cut them down even more when they become the stringers. Yeah, it won't be wasted. And everything's fine. Hey, remember how I said that there were four parts? Well, that is not true. See, we're making two basically odd shaped boxes and there are six sides to these boxes. So we have four of 12. And right now Jade is making the forward parts of these leg boxes, parts five and six. The front of the legs is just a straight line, but they do have the curve from the form and that's where Jade miscalculated on her first cut. What? <laughs> I was just saying that I'm proud to say that our curve are perfect opposites. We nailed it with our form. So meaning when I was- So you can take this forward starboard and you can make it a forward port? Yeah, so I was able to just, over. it's perfect. That's awesome. Isn't that great? I don't remember where it was, but I like that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, it looks like an error. Oh no, there's just a black line. Nice, go us, way to go form. Did you say it looks like an error? Yeah, but it was just a black line. Oh yeah, my Sharpie yeah. ran wild. <laughs> Sharpie's gone wild. Whoop. I'm about to start mixing up some epoxy and I'm gonna put a kind of a finish layer on these two sheets because these are just gonna be basically just pretty sheets. So I'm gonna put a finish layer of epoxy on these and then I got a heat gun that I got from the shop here so I can get any bubbles out. And then I will also use the epoxy to put some some glass, uh, thickened epoxy glass onto these corners and get this ready to go. And then if I have any epoxy left, uh, maybe I'll do, we have two other little pieces that I'll maybe do if I feel like it. And it's getting noisy in here. You can hear all the other tools and people shouting and music and all sorts of stuff. So hopefully these lab mics are doing good because it is noisy. So we both have headphones in. We're just adding a layer of epoxy. This epoxy, or the, the carbon isn't cured all the way yet. 
Uh, we did it last night, but this has such a slow cure time. They didn't have the heater on, so it's still quite tacky. So this heat gun is just very lightly popping all the air bubbles. It's not getting all of them, but it's getting most of them. Okay, these are now nice and glossy. And I think they're going to be as good now as they're ever going to be. Um, they'll probably still need a final sanding. All said and done. Um, but now I'm going to use the leftover. I just have a little bit of leftover and add my thickener into here so I can fill in some of these holes. Okay, this is now curing. I filled in these corners. Thank you. Beautifully. And I might have to re tap that one dab just dab it a little bit um, those are these are nice and shiny Jade pretty sure this means I'm doing it right As Brett has pointed out, I've made a big mess. He only pointed out because he doesn't want to be on good terms with me today. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I have made a big mess because I'm going through our scrap piles and I'm finding any scrap pieces, which some of them are intentionally perfect for this, some not so much, um, but I'm using all the leftover pieces for this section since it's a smaller layup. So it's perfect, but it means a lot of extra edges. What are these sections? These are the, well, this is, these are both the forward sections and they have a curve. Well, it depends. It depends. Is your time worth more, or is, or or are the materials worth more? But it's good not to be wasteful. I, I'm glad I wasn't wasteful. So it's laid up, and now I just need to clean up the layup. Feeling good about it. Today was a good day, successful day. I did a bunch of prep work. So I these are our compasses, and this one I had to do some fiberglass repairs on this side to kind of rebuild it. So I rebuilt some fiberglass into there, made a little plate. And in this one, I started sanding down for paint. So we're gonna, I sanded down all these, took out the, the LED lights and got it ready for paint. So once we can take this one apart, oh, the same thing, prep that for paint, and then we can paint them, which I got the paint today. That was another part of my day. I was going to the store and getting paint. And now it's time to clean up. So it was really, my day kind of felt not super. Yeah, we did. Oh yeah, and these. Yeah, these look pretty nice. I think these, yeah, I think we're gonna end up having to sand them. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's just little fibers and then also there's just dust in the air and stuff, so. But the reality is we're gonna be cutting out most of this because it's mostly like open space like that. So we might not have to, it just depends on how like, how much do we actually care? But yeah, those look good. They're actually, I'm happy with how those are looking just as is. Good job. We have a lot of cleaning up to do. We have a lot of cleaning up to do. Looks like somebody had a party in here while we were gone. Champagne cork. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? 
right to me. Kava. That's Kava. Nice throw.